Good morning, Fraser. Sunday morning, Christmas Eve, uh, church day, but also Christmas Eve, <laughs> which means cooking day. So uh, I apologize, I, I just woke up. <sighs> I haven't had time to do my hair or anything like that, I'm just a complete mess. So, you know. So, I've already been up for about 10 minutes and getting the, uh, the turkey going. It was uh, mostly thought I was just kind of, um, you know, getting the, the neck and the giblets out of it and all that sort of stuff. So, a little bit of butter on, on the turkey. This is Mum's recipe, the turkey and the stuffing. Going back for as long as I can remember kind of thing, right? So, I try to keep it as, as close as possible. A little bit of poultry seasoning. <laughs> I was, we ran into uh, uh, Jordan's mom and Jordan's sister, uh, Cherry and Tess, yesterday, and we were, we were just chatting about different things, chatting about Christmas and about the meals and stuff like that, and Tess made a comment that I really appreciated. She said, uh, you measure, you don't, like, you don't measure garlic with, you know, spoons or, or measuring spoons or anything like that. She said, you measure garlic with your heart. And I appreciated that very much. <laughs> so that was garlic. There you go. That was onion. Powder. That's it, man. So now I'm just going to have the camera focused on the oven for five to six hours? No? Okay. All right, now we're gonna get ready to go to church. All right, I'm taking a quick break from church to come home and baste the turkey. It's about 10 o'clock. It smelled fantastic as soon as I walked upstairs. Almost grabbed it without oven mitts. Really? Okay, I'm just not thinking here. So, just got home from church about 10-15 minutes ago, and the turkey is nice and done. Looks good, but we're going to head out to uh, Sean and Allison's for, uh, for a quick bite of lunch, and uh, then we'll come back and do some cooking and stuff. Nice. It's late. It's like just after 3, and uh, i got to do a lot of cooking. I'm making two batches of, uh, of uh, stuffing. So, um, for the one, taters. Sam's eating a uh, Sam's eating a double cupcake, Christmas cupcake. Fold it over like a sandwich. That's the way to do it, right? So, so it calls for three medium uh, potatoes, but you know those are kind of medium-ish, almost whatever. So anyway, I'm gonna do potatoes for one, and I'm gonna try yams for the other, because we're trying to stay away from potatoes and stuff. I'm gonna chop them up, mash them up. Well, we're gonna chop them up, boil them up, and then mash them up. What are you eating? More? Oh. Sam has a bit of a sweet tooth addiction. How he's still like 127 pounds, I have no idea. He's <laughs> got a metabolism like my dad's. These things are weird, man. They turn very, very quickly. I have never done yams. Maybe orange one. It's a sweet potato, and we've just been eating sweet potatoes. So you're telling me that these are not good for Chess? Because she doesn't like one of them, right? Well, she's not a fan of sweet potatoes, but the thing that we thought was a sweet potato is apparently a yam. My point is, you go and buy what, or grab what you guys normally buy. In fact, take Mum with you, and then I would be more comfortable with that. See, the problem is they say. They that? all get confused. These are potatoes. Everything okay. gets confused. Whatever is what, whatever they eat that she can eat, that's what we need to get. I don't care what you call them. I don't care whether you call them whatever. That's what we need to get. Where is the one that? Right here. Oh, they're already cut up? Yes. Oh, see? If you take in the yam, it's wet. Yeah. Alright, not really a meltdown, but you know, just kind of a. A uh, uh, breach in the system, trying to figure out, you know, what's what. Because uh, 
Yeah, we were told, Sam and Chaz told us that they eat yams, so we got some yams, but the yams that we got don't look anything like the yams that they get, uh, because we don't buy this stuff, we don't know, we have no idea what they look like. And so Sam's like, no, that's the wrong stuff, that's the sweet potato. I'm like, I don't know what it's, they're like, just go, just go to the store, both of you, just take mom, go to the store. Well, no, we should, no, go buy what Chaz can eat so that I get the right thing to cook with. Excuse me one second. Juno, that's enough. That's enough. So I just sent them off after, you know, five minutes of arguing with them. Go to the store, Sam. Walk up to what you normally buy and say, this is what I get. And now we can get it. Now we know. Uh. Sorry. Do I seem stressed? I'm trying to get, you know, food cooked. That's all. Probably not going to get cooked till like, you know. Well, I know it doesn't have to be ready till tomorrow. But my stressing today makes tomorrow go smooth, right? Today, fair enough. I'll be sitting in a corner, rocking, sucking my thumb. But, you know, tomorrow I'll be fine. So, the uh, the stuffing recipe. It's pretty, pretty easy. This is a uh, three-quarter cup of butter. So it'll be a, a stick and a half of butter in each. So for breadcrumbs, we're using croutons. And we need six cups of croutons. Potatoes are done. Let's go crazy. So I'm going to add some uh, some butter and milk, to make like a creamed uh, mashed potato kind of thing. Is what I'm looking at, and then that will go into our our mix. Sam left one. Sam left one. One cupcake. Eat the thing, man. Just saying, you know. This is quite literally Mum's old masher from a thousand years ago. Ooh, that's better. So much brighter. So Allie not only doesn't like onions, like onions actually hurt her stomach, so she can do onion powder, but she actually can't do onions. Um, so what I use instead of onions, because this calls for, I think an onion, half an onion, I can't remember, but I use one package of No Name, not the Lipton's, can't be the Lipton's, but the No Name brand um, onion soup mix. I, I strain most of the dried onions out of it, but that seems to work, and that works out well. All right, so while the butter's uh, melting, getting the spices ready. And again, just, you know, kind of going. Uh, salt. That's probably good. For time. I need two teaspoons at a time. And they're not like, you know. Okay, that was probably a little extreme. There you go. One. Two. And then I get poultry seasoning. A tablespoon of poultry seasoning. Better have enough. Now the six cups of croutons into there, and then just basically stir them around. It calls for a tablespoon of chicken oxo, but you know me and tablespoons is just you know more of a suggestion than anything else. So, that's about a tablespoon, right? Give or take, a tablespoon. It's about a quarter cup-ish, isn't it? Quarter cup. Sure it is. Basically just trying to soak up the liquid that's in there, all the butter. Oh, 
mostly mixed. I never go exact by any recipe. And then the uh, the tablespoon of the poultry seasoning, the two tablespoons of thyme, and salt and pepper to taste. And it just all goes in. Just all goes in. You know what? Never forget just a little bit, just a little bit of garlic, right? Just a little bit. So that seems to have soaked up the liquid sufficiently. Oh, it smells fantastic. I'm only doing this to try and soak up what else is in the pan here. Little spices and any leftover water, liquid, oil, whatever. Add the mashed potatoes. And in all honesty, that's it. That's the that's the stuffing. Gonna mix it in and mix it in really, really well. So the croutons have a tendency to like breadcrumbs, right? So they're gonna they're gonna soften up a little bit, and, and it's gonna be easier to mix. And so they're back with the whatever it is that we're gonna cook. So you know. Here's your mystery, veg. What are they? We don't know because they label them differently in that store than they do in the other store. Yeah. So, so this was labeled this store, yams they before the foods. But when we bought them in Savon, they were called sweet potatoes. We didn't buy these in Savon. We bought those in Savon. And Did you called... buy these where you normally buy them? Yeah. You bought the ones that you normally buy? Yes. yes. That's all I care about. The story is superfluous. Can you ask them to help us? What? Maybe Daniela can help us out. Oh. oh. It's like you forgot the basil. There's no basil in there. I know, I'm just bugging you. <laughs> Stay away from my recipes, woman. <laughs> So this is new. We're gonna try this. Sharon taught us this. I like it. I like the idea of it. Whether I can make it work or not, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm gonna make it basically into a loaf, rolled in in uh, aluminum foil, so that you can slice it. Sharon was able to do it, so Sharon can do it. I should be able to do it. Normally I throw the neck of the turkey in there, oh. so. Martin's got the weird angry look. Because of the smell of the food? I don't know, I think so. Or because of the... Like, he's going to kill him. So, what I normally do is, I normally put it into a casserole pan. But I'm not doing that. I'm trying this this thing here, and I normally take the chicken neck, chicken neck, the turkey neck, and I put it on top. So what I'm doing is kind of putting the turkey neck there, and I try and roll this out. Should still theoretically give me the uh, the flavor that I'm looking for. There we go. Stuffing. Stuffing in a log. It's, it's like a Yule it's log. It's like a Yule log, that's right. See? He's just going to call it a... So we're going to call these whatever it is that they like to eat. I don't know. Sweet. Is that the color? Let's call them sweet yams. I have no idea. So we are in dire need of help. Quality Foods called these yams.
Uh, even on my bill, right? Yeah. Allie does pub bucks with her bills. Not that you can see that right now because the camera's pointed down. But when Allie does, you know, her receipts. Pub buck. I worked in a pub. Had to do it. She was a shooter girl. I was a shooter girl. And I made lots of tips because everybody felt sorry for me because they thought I was little. Didn't hurt that she was wearing a string bikini. I did not. Ew. Yams, see? Yams. I don't care what they're called. You show me what they I are, I cook them the up. Of this. I just want to know what I'm cooking and make sure I'm cooking the right stuff. I don't want Chaz not to eat dinner. She likes that. And her name does not have a head in it. <laughs> wow, I can't believe in this day and age she's making fun of my speech impediment. I'm... <laughs> cool. Wow. So I do kind of get a little bit of crazy sometimes. A little, I kind of get a little bit of crazy. I don't know. I kind of love a little crazy, a little psycho in the kitchen because you know, trying to do 18 things at once. But I actually really do enjoy cooking. So I enjoy making food that tastes good. You can see, generally speaking, I make food that tastes good. You know, but. Gonna make my gravy. My gravy is kind of started off being mums at one point in time. Yeah. Mum taught me the basics of gravy making and I just kind of go crazy. So, and one of the biggest things I need for gravy making is this cup. This cup is my measuring cup. We got another uh, chicken oxo out there, babe? Please tell me we have another chicken oxo out there. Uh -oh. Alright, so not quite as much chicken oxo as I like. And garlic, of course. And then dry vegetables. A little bit of seasoned salt. Poulet in a mug. This stuff's great, this, this vegetable stuff, it's quite good. Alright, we don't, we try and use as little flour as possible, but for good gravy, in my opinion. One, two, three. That's going to take a minute to boil. This seems to be good. <laughs> Texture's good. Pleased with that. Still gravy duty. We're going there. 
boiling a bit there. So I don't strain anything out of the uh, out of the turkey in the first instance. So I make the, uh, the gravy first, and then I'll strain it all the junk out. And we've got a nice clean gravy and a nice flavorful gravy. So it's got to thicken up a bit. I may use one more of those. Just two scoops this time. I'm gonna wait for a minute, but I think I need it. that much patience. Yeah. So the only thing I gotta make after this is a is a cheese sauce. That's gonna thicken, that feels like it's gonna thicken. That's good. Is good. If I do say so myself. Even with that. Mm. So good, she says. She oh, says so, so good. good. He makes a good gravy. He'll make a good gravy. Hey, Fraser. Bit of a busy day today. Um, not in doing projects, but in the hustle and the bustle of the, uh, you know, the ongoing time of year. <laughs> so we took out, so yeah, we were at church till, I don't know, 12, 30 or so, and then got home, uh, pulled out the turkey out of the oven, which was, it was, it was perfectly cooked. It was like, it, literally it's like falling off the bone, but we went out to, uh, Sean and Allison's hung out with them for a little while. They fed us lunch, which was nice. Ripped home and got to cooking <laughs> and clearly had the wrong, you know, I don't know what the drama is there. I don't know. Whatever it was that we got wasn't the right one. 
you heard the drama. You heard the arguments between Sam and Allie and me. But uh, I made them go and get the proper ones, whatever it was, which was totally different from what I had. So, so made all that stuff up. And that was good. Uh, made the gravy, and just so that you know, I had turned the recording off. But Allie said after you know she said it was perfect. She said it was good. I turned the recording off a minute too late because she said, "Man, I could just drink that whole thing." <laughs> oregano in it. She loved the taste of it. <laughs> Don't you tell her. <laughs> anyway, I want to read tonight out of the Gospel of Luke. You realize that because my memory is absolutely horrible, uh, there's times when I'm probably going to, you know, read and talk about the same things. That's okay. Gospel of Luke, chapter 7, verse 36 to 50. Now one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him. So he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. When a woman who had lived a sinful life in that town learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster jar of perfume, and she stood behind him at his feet, weeping. She began to wet his feet with her tears. <clears throat> then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet... He would know who was touching him and what kind of a woman she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher. Two men owed money to a certain moneylender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he canceled the debts of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt canceled. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I come into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, for she loved much. But he who has been forgiven little, loves little. Clearly the analogy there in the relation is... is the, the two that owed money, the 500 denarii and the 50 denarii, that was directly relating to the, uh, the sinful woman and the Pharisee, right? <clears throat> the sinful woman knew that she had led a sinful life. She knew that she needed to be forgiven. She knew that she was forgiven. And yet the Pharisee, thinking that he's pious and he's righteous, didn't need to be forgiven. Jesus made the analogy... <clears throat> between the two of them. And there's no doubt in my mind that Simon the Pharisee there knew exactly what Jesus was saying. Um, but my understanding of the tradition is if somebody comes over to your house, you offer water to their feet because that's that's just a, that's a, I don't know whether that was a law, but it was certainly a tradition. They, they cleaned their feet when they, they washed their feet when they went into anybody's house, their own house. They washed their feet and then carried on kind of thing, right? He didn't do that. <clears throat> He didn't greet him properly. So, again, what's his heart attitude? Why, why didn't he offer water for Jesus to wash his feet? Why didn't he kiss Jesus hello? Is it because he had disdain in his heart for Jesus in the first place? <clears throat> and yet felt that he was pious and righteous enough that he didn't need saving, he didn't need forgiving? We all need forgiving. Absolutely every one of us. <clears throat> From the absolute worst to those who don't think they need forgiving uh, because we're all the same it doesn't matter if we've broken if we've sinned on one thing we've sinned on everything the bible says if you've broken one law you've broken them all so none of us are righteous absolutely every one of us is a sinner we're guilty of the entirety of sin period all sin every one of us needs forgiveness some people just know that they led us into life compared to some that <clears throat> maybe don't think that they have. And that's what Jesus was getting at there with the uh, with the Pharisee. So uh, I wanted to share that with you tonight. I hope you had a great day today. I love you. You know that God loves you. I miss you. Hope to see you soon. And uh, yeah, I will post more tomorrow.